morning, good afternoon, and yes, possibly good evening, depending on when you like to listen slash view your podcast. This is another edition of Utica's Knockout Audio. I am your host, Lance Malden. It is great to be back with you. Had a week of rest and renewal via youth camp. Uh, and for those that uh, have ever been to youth camp as a youth leader chaperone, uh, you know that for the most part it is go, go, go. But there is times for rest and renewal. Uh, so thankful for the camp that we attend and uh, everything that goes on uh, at the camp and just our time with the youth group and that I am actually the one that gets to uh, teach uh, and help facilitate and lead some of our group discussions. So, so thankful uh, for this past week. Uh, I am uh, so excited to be back with you and to record a podcast after taking last week off. It gave me more time to prep and prepare uh, for today's topic uh, because today's topic is going to seem a little bit weighty considering the culture we live in. However, if this was mm, maybe 40, 50 years ago, uh, it probably wouldn't have been as bad. Uh, however, uh, so it's going to seem a little bit weighty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you one perspective, give you my perspective, which is typically more the conservative perspective, uh, and then I'm going to give you a gracious warning uh, as to why uh, I don't like the other perspective um, and just kind of give you a warning out there uh, for simple clarification uh, and to give that warning to you guys. Um, so uh, today's topic is Article 6 in the Baptist Faith and Message 2000 entitled The Church. I'm excited. I hope you guys are ready uh, because I think, I think I am. All right, you ready? Let's do it. All right, for those that are watching via YouTube, you have the description down there, down there. Uh, for those that are listening, uh, I will try my best to slow things down and to highlight and work through this with you. All right, Article 6 of the church, entitled The Church, okay, it says this, A New Testament church of the Lord Jesus Christ okay, is an autonomous local congregation of baptized believers, comma, let me just pause right there and talk about uh, autonomous local congregation uh, as Baptist, Southern Baptist. Uh, this is where we differ differentiate between a lot of other denominations where they have a bishop or presiding convention that tells you what to do uh, with the building, property, uh, even with liturgy. Like they'll, they'll tell you what to sing, what to say. Even the pastor has a script of what he is supposed to say sometimes to uh, the congregation. So uh, when it's autonomous, the church decides what it can do with the building, with the property. Uh, the pastors, elders, they get to decide what happens in the liturgy. Um, with the worship service. The pastor can preach through books. He can do a sermon series. All of those things are autonomous, okay? Uh, however, uh, with other denominations, sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes they have to be told or ask permission to do certain things, okay? Um, it is a community of baptized believers, okay? Uh, so let me just say this. I am a firm believer that the church gathering... Hey, not the church itself, but the church gathering on Sundays, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, whenever you meet small groups, uh, is primarily for believers. Okay, uh, And I say that with this addition because we're going to get to it. Its sole purpose is to seek to extend the gospel to the ends of the earth. Okay, The whole purpose of the church, Jesus said, you are to be my disciples to the ends of the earth. Okay, The sole purpose of the church uh, is to share the gospel with those outside the church. But the church gathering itself is primarily for believers. And can you invite other peoples into the church? Of course you can. I mean, like, why not? Why not share them, bring them into the fold? Uh, that's one thing that I, I've heard so many stories and actually experienced this, sharing the gospel with others, uh, is that when we bring them into the church— a lot of the times it's a positive response, at least the churches that I've been a part of. It's a positive response in the fact that people love the community and sense the love in the church. Uh, and so uh, that's my little tidbit on that. Okay, It continues after baptized believers to say associated by covenant or promise in the faith and fellowship of the gospel. Okay, Centered around the gospel. Observing the two ordinances uh, of Christ comma 
Okay, two ordinances are uh, believers' baptism and communion slash Lord's Supper, depending on what you desire as your terminology. However, I did see one church uh, many years ago that added an ordinance. I think it was some type of Baptist church that added an ordinance of foot washing. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, it's not a command, uh, but I have been a part of foot washing services growing up in the church. Very uh, symbolic of serving other people. Uh, loved it to death. Actually, uh, me and my wife uh, had a foot washing in our reception where I got to wash her feet, and uh, it was very symbolic, very moving. I loved every bit of it, okay? Uh, that's just um, an act of service to other believers, okay? Let's pick up, okay? So, observing the two ordinances of Christ, comma, governed by his laws, exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word, okay? So, gospel-centered, all focused on his word. Those are all good terms. We love that. In seeking to extend the gospel to the ends of the earth, okay? Period. Great. Sole purpose of the church, let's in there. <laughs> um, we love that. Um, and so uh, I believe that mission should be a huge part of the church. And I, I really liked the Acts 1-8 model uh, that I saw a church do one time where, uh, you know, in Acts 1-8 it says, uh, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, and they used it as um, local, state, and then global. Very powerful uh, having that kind of model. I thought it was very healthy. Each congregation operates under the lordship of Christ through a democratic processes. Each church has its own like church covenant, bylaws, all of those things. Okay, uh, And so I've always said that the church doesn't move unless it's wanting to. So if like the pastor wants to go in one direction, uh, but the church isn't ready, um, that just means the church isn't ready. And so uh, it's got its own democratic process and how they evaluate those things. Each church has its own different type of church covenant. I think most of them have similar. The, the three or four churches I've been a part of, the church covenants, relatively similar in language. Um, in such a congregation, okay, it picks up. In such a congregation, each member is responsible and accountable to Christ as Lord. I remember seeing this interview where people were coming up to a mic and asking um, John MacArthur, and this lady asked, what spiritual authority does the pastor have? Now, the pastor is held to uh, somewhat of a higher standard um, in some aspects, but this lady asked, what spiritual authority does the pastor have? And John MacArthur, and many of you know he's a great biblical scholar, um, he said, absolutely none or zero. You know, it's like he don't have any spiritual authority over you. He's just there as a shepherd uh, to help and to guide and to lead and direct. And um, even though he is kind of somewhat responsible for that in shepherding, uh, he has no spiritual authority. Uh, and so each member is responsible and accountable to Christ. Okay, uh, Therefore, we can't blame the pastor for our sanctification or anything like that. We should be responsible. Uh, and so that's that's very comforting, okay? Uh, and also very, it should be a challenge for us um, to make sure that we're responsible for our own sanctification in the Lord Jesus, okay? It picks up. Its two scriptural offices are that of pastor, elder, overseer, and deacon, okay? Uh, so pastor, elder, overseer, those are all used interchangeably uh, in the New Testament. Poime, um, episcopos, presbyteros, all of those are used interchangeably. Uh, those were the Greek terms, okay? Uh, and so, and deacon. So it differentiates, we know that from uh, 1 Timothy 3, uh, the office of elder, seer, overseer, those qualifications, and we're going to get into those as well, okay? So uh, while both men and women are gifted for service, Comma, the office of pastor, elder, overseer, is limited to men as qualified by Scripture. Okay, uh, And so we're going to get into that, but there was an amendment made last year. Uh, and so it gives this amendment, which I absolutely love, think it's huge in, huge importance. Okay, The New Testament speaks of also the church as the body of Christ, which includes all of the redeemed of all ages, believers from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. I believe that's the amendment. If that's not an amendment, 
Please correct me. Um, however, uh, for the most part, we're going to talk about this right here. It says, while both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor, elder, overseer is limited to men as qualified by Scripture. Uh, and so I know this past two years ago, in 2023, they also tried to make an amendment. Uh, it passed then, but it's got to pass for two, year, two consecutive years uh, for the amendment in the Constitution to add some clarifying language. It didn't get passed with like 3% off. I think it's got to reach a certain percentage and it was like 3 or 4% off. Um, however, let me just give you some history of the Southern Baptist Convention, at least from the previous couple years. Okay, uh, Last year it was decided because one of the larger churches in Saddleback, that was pastored by Rick Warren, uh, decided to ordain uh, three women uh, into the elder role, and so large, I want to say it was like 88% uh, vote to disfellowship with that church uh, because they had done that. Um, so with that being said, this is probably going to pertain to Southern Baptists for the most part. Um, and so... 88%. Now, I've looked at some conventions and looked at their voting. Uh, one church uh, was, uh, one denomination was like American Reformed Church or Christian Reformed Church. And their votes two years ago were one some, the 120 something to 50 or 60 something. So it was like two, 200 people were there. So maybe a little bit over. Um, maybe only certain people were allowed to vote. But I looked at the place where they are, it was very, very small. This is a convention that I think had 10,000 10, plus in attendance. Uh, maybe it was 14,000 in attendance uh, for the convention this past year. So 88% is very, very high. Okay, So that was 88% of people that were agreeing to disfellowship a church because of this particular doctrine. Okay. And so, here are the, basically the two perspectives. Let me give you some big terminology so it can help. You hear the terminology complementarian. Okay? This is my perspective. I'm complementarian in the fact that I believe pastor, elder, overseer is reserved for men as qualified by Scripture. Okay? So I'm full agreement with this statement. Then we have the egalitarian view, which says that this is a more so of a secondary issue and that it is okay for women to serve in the elder role, okay? Uh, notice I didn't say deacon. I have a different perspective on deacon as there were female deacons. Now, deaconesses. Now, there's been some question over terminology. Was it a deacon's wife or was it a female deacon? I have no reason to believe that it was anything other than a female deacon. So uh, I'm willing to concede or concede in the fact that there were female deacons just because I see it in Scripture. That's a side note. So uh, complementarian believes that women can serve in ministry. However, it's just reserved for pastor, elder, overseer, uh, that men are required to be in those positions. Okay, uh, So it's just a funny way of saying uh, they're equal, but this position God has reserved for men, okay? Uh, and I'll get into why I believe that and why that's been the view for thousands and thousands of years, okay? And then, um, so this past year, um, the amendment didn't get, the amendment for the Constitution uh, didn't get passed by 3 or 4%, something like that. And then uh, it decided to disfellowship with another church, First Baptist Church of Alexandria. Now, this one hits home a little bit closer uh, simply for the fact that um, I know people in that church uh, and have actually been to this church. Uh, and so I want to kind of somewhat be careful but also understand that my view is just different from theirs and try to proceed with as much grace as I can. Uh, so I believe that this right here holds true while both men and women are gifted for service in the church okay listen to that both men and women are gifted for service in the church okay believe that 100 percent. the office of pastor elder overseer is limited to men uh, as qualified by scripture okay where is that scripture coming from let me just give you first timothy 2 many of you already know this scripture um if you don't first timothy chapter 2 starting in verse 8 it says 
I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. And a lot of times this discussion, you see a lot of quarreling and a lot of people who may seem power hungry because this is just what Scripture says. I, Or maybe they just get quarrelsome because they know they're in the wrong. I don't know. Either way, I do see a lot of quarreling when it comes to this topic, and it's really just a matter of biblical perspective. Verse 9, Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly attire, uh, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. Okay, And then it immediately goes into the qualifications for overseer as well as deacon. Now listen to the terminology. Now this is where we may have some differences because I'm going to talk about the terminology and the pronouns as it continuously uses the pronoun he. Okay, uh, And then uh, also the terminology that is used in deacons a little bit different. Um, but I want to spend more time on the overseer. Okay? The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of over overseer, he desires a noble task. Real quick, just a personal story since this is uh, my podcast. Uh, I never wanted to be in the one in it and just didn't want to do public speaking. I'd much rather assume go out and play in traffic, okay, get hit by a bus, something like that. Um, I believe God was calling to me this uh, probably my senior year of high school, and then it confirmed it in my freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year of college, um, where I just got put in positions that I didn't think that I was worthy of. And yeah, just tried to submit to God and his authority. And so anyway, it's nothing that I really desired to do, but I believe that God just called me and put me in positions to do so. Verse 2, Therefore an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-control, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. That's going to be one difference. Able to teach is going to be one difference between that and deacon. Not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. A lot of those qualifications are, I've heard many commentators, this is a base level. All Christians should desire these types of things. Okay, it's just in our nature as Christians, as we be, are being more conformed into the image of Christ, those are requirements, or not requirements, but base level requirements for the office of overseer, uh, pastor. Okay, then it picks up in verse 4. Listen to the pronouns. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be thought of by outsiders so that he might not fall into disgrace into the snare of the devil. Okay, so you hear those pronouns that are saying he, 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 his, all of those. Okay, uh, so with that being said, I think the Bible confirms more so of the complementarian view than egalitarian. Uh, and I'm going to have a conversation soon with, hopefully, someone who has that different perspective just to simply gain his thoughts and processes on how to handle texts like that. Uh, because even though it sounds bad to some, it's just a matter of biblical authority. And I've said this before, there are some things in the Bible that I don't like. Yet, I try my best to submit to them um, and handle them with, with care. Uh, much like we're going to have to handle this with care. And, and you're going to have your own hermeneutic on how to, how to handle these types of texts. Uh, however, I think with this particular thing, I am more so, this is a primary issue as it is biblical authority telling us what to do and how to handle things in the church. The egalitarian view, I think, would simply say this is a secondary issue because of the culture and context. However, the context is this is Paul writing to Timothy, who is a pastor. 
So I think the context is there to support the complementarian view, just m my thoughts. Uh, however, I'm going to have that conversation with somebody of a differing perspective soon on their thoughts on this. So maybe I can do this a little bit better when I have that conversation. Okay, uh, And a lot of people will use like Deborah and Hulda uh, on how they were in leadership positions, but that's not a pastoral role. Okay, uh, And then I would also argue that Isaiah 312 would say that that was just to show how bad the times were because Israel was like, give us a judge, give us a judge. And goes like, you know, you don't want to judge. Uh, and so he gave it to him, and then it was to show how how kind of messed up the times were uh, back then. So anywho, uh, now with those two views, the egalitarian view and the complementarian view, let me just share some information that I have uh, been researching on some of these denominations who have gone down the egalitarian path um, for some way or another, they have all, uh, three out of the four have ended up in way left field, and I would say downright heretical. Okay, so this is kind of the the slippery slope that um, we have seen and the pattern that's been used. Okay, uh, so uh, the PCUSA in 1930 they ordained their first deaconess. Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm a proponent of deaconesses when the right, rightly, I'm a little bit more Presbyterian and Reformed when it comes to elder and deacon. Um, so anyway, 1930, they are doing their first deacon, deaconess. Okay? Uh, 1956, the PCUSA ordained its first uh, woman elder, okay? um, or at least there's elder conversations in 1956. 1971 is when they ordained their first women. Okay, um, so 1956 they have conversations regarding women's roles in the eldership position. Uh, 1971 they ordained their first women, and then 2014 they affirm uh, homosexual marriage. They say that the clergy can perform marriages as well as actively participate as a clergy member. 2014. Okay, so. There's PCUSA, okay? The Christian Reformed Church is actually one that I mentioned earlier, okay? Uh, so 1973, they have a discussion over women's roles. 1984, they have their first deaconess. 1995, they ordain women. 2022, they begin to have conversations over homosexuality and the roles with clergy. Can they perform these marriages and that type of thing? The vote was, I'll get the number wrong, so I'm going to estimate it was like 120 to 60, I think it was like 120-something to 50-something. I can't remember. But anyway, that's like two-thirds, you know, we're saying one way, and one-third is slowly creeping its way in. So the path is there, okay? It's not totally complete yet, but you're going to see with two more denominations where it has gone down back to this role, okay? Uh, the Episcopal Church, okay, uh, 1974, they uh, agree that it's okay to ordain women. Uh, the 1989, they ordained their first bishop, and then in 2006, they ordained their uh, kind of like their head presiding bishop as a woman. Uh, in 2015, they allow clergy members to perform homosexual marriages as well as be active participants uh, in homosexuality. Okay, uh, and then many of you know the history of the United Methodists as it's uh, been talked about on social media and all these other things where they have gone down they've they've ordained uh women as pastors and the next thing you know they're in the united methodist had this huge split where churches are backing out because now they're ordaining uh they their clergy members are actively participating in and um you know a, performing homosexual marriages so three out of the four have already sealed the deal their views on homosexuality. And as Baptists, we believe that that's wrong, that that is sinful. Uh, we don't, we love people who are actively participating in sin. However, uh, when it comes to the church and church discipline, there's, there's something wrong there. Okay. So we've seen the pattern so this is my warning that if the Southern Baptists continue in this or even egalitarians continue in this, 
there seems to be a pattern that God is just not honoring this, okay? And so that's kind of like my, my stiff, kind of hard warning. Uh, but I know people who are egalitarian are going to be like, no, we're not going to fold on that issue. Uh, and that may be true. That, that, that simply may be true. You may not fold on that issue. Uh, but I'm still as of the mindset that this is a primary issue with biblical authority that says don't do this. And here we see churches doing this, and then they've gone down the path of heretical. Uh, and I would say that their lampstands have been removed. Okay, That's just my thoughts and my perspective on that. So, um, yeah, it seems disheartening, uh, but I want to leave you with this. So this is like the so what, okay? Uh, We've been trying to do this for some weeks now where we add in the so what. So what with um, all of this information with the church? Submit to the Lord Jesus and his authority. And Jesus tells his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay? Uh, And so you have to decide whether you're on one side or the other. I have kind of always been on the complementarian side, and I don't see that shifting anytime soon, um, even with having discussions, um, simply because I find it it's one of biblical authority, and I'm going to submit to God and His Word all the time. Okay, uh, If you're egalitarian, I'm sure you some egalitarians will say, well, I submit to God and His, his laws too. I just think it's a very, very slippery slope. Okay, So the so what is... To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, okay? Uh, And be prepared and know about these issues, especially like if you're a Southern Baptist church, you're going to have to know these issues because they're going to keep coming up. And uh, I think think my uncle said it best. We we don't always get it right the first time, but generally down the line we get it right. Um, And then even with this disfellowship with First Baptist Church Alexandria, the vote was 90%. To disfellowship with that church, okay, uh, and I think that's because Saddleback probably had a larger following. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, even though we didn't pass the amendment through, the tools are in place to disfellowship with churches who go down or possibly more egalitarian than we like. Okay, uh, so anyway, that's the news. That's somewhat of news. I'm just saying. That's just somewhat of the news. Uh, That's the news, and that is Article 6 in the church. My hope and my prayer is that you will continue doing this. This is the sole purpose of the church, is to seek to extend the gospel to the ends of the earth. Brothers and sisters, be faithful to that mission. Regardless of where you stand, egalitarian or complementarian, go to the ends of the earth. Share the gospel. Share the love of Christ with those around you. Pray that they will repent of their sins, have the scales removed from their eyes, and that they would behold the Lamb of God who is able to take the sins from the world. Amen. Go with God. Hope you guys have a Jesus-filled week. We will catch you in the next one, prayerfully, Lord willing. God bless. (laughs) 